If you have kyphosis of your spine or kyphosis with lordosis, you may be wondering how it got that way, how serious of a problem it is, and if there's anything that you can do to reverse it. Now, if you have kyphosis or if you're watching a video about kyphosis, chances are you probably already know what it is, but I'll explain exactly what it is, what the difference between kyphosis and lordosis are, and some simple tips you can use to help start to reverse the problem. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and at More For Life, we help people stay active, mobile, and healthy without relying on pain medications, injections, or surgeries. So if you find this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. So first of all, what is the difference between kyphosis and lordosis? Well, kyphosis is a curve of your spine where the convex part of the curve faces towards the backside. Lordosis is just the opposite, where the convex part of the curve faces towards the front side. Now, kyphosis and lordosis are both normal things to have in your spine. You should have alternating lordosis and kyphosis curves where you have lordosis in your neck, kyphosis in your upper back, lordosis in your lower back, and then kyphosis in your butt. Now, the kyphosis curves are sometimes referred to as primary curves because they develop when you're a fetus and you're curled up in the fetal position. The lordosis curves are sometimes referred to as secondary curves because they start to develop in early childhood as you start to crawl and sit up and stand up. They develop so you can be upright against gravity. Now, like I said, both kyphosis and lordosis are normal in normal amounts. You don't want to have too much of them though or too little of them. And when people refer to kyphosis posture or kyphosis lordosis posture, it often means that they're excessive, that you have either excessive kyphosis or excessive lordosis. And they often do occur together because when you're kyphotic in the thoracic spine, you don't want to walk around looking at the floor. So people often compensate by coming up from their lower back. And so just like kyphosis and lordosis develop when you're a fetus, they tend to develop in dysfunction, starting with the thoracic curve where you go into kyphosis, and then as a result, you come into more lordosis in your lumbar spine. So can you fix those problems? And the answer to that is sometimes. There are cases where, for example, you have osteoporosis, where you can actually develop wedge-shaped fractures of your spine, and that can create an irreversible kyphosis in your spine. Likewise, if you start to develop arthritis in your joints and you get bone spurs that develop in that kyphosis, that may at some point become irreversible. But the main message is that the quicker you address it, the less severe it gets, and even if you do get some irreversible changes, you can prevent the progression of the curve by paying attention to it and doing the right type of postures and exercises. Now, what are those postures and exercises that help prevent the progression of a kyphosis curve or can actually help to reverse a kyphosis curve in less severe cases? Well, largely you wanna go into spinal extension and not extension from your lower back where you're creating more lordosis, but you actually wanna to start to extend more through your thoracic spine. Now you don't actually want to reverse the kyphosis, meaning going into lordosis. You just wanna come into a lesser amount of kyphosis so that it's more of a normal amount of kyphosis. Now, how do you do that? Well, you do that largely through spinal extension exercises and mostly extension through your thoracic spine. You don't wanna extend more at your lumbar spine because that just creates more lordosis in your lumbar spine, which again is the way that people typically develop a hyperlordosis or excessive lordosis in their lower back. So here are a couple exercises that you can use to help reduce the kyphosis in your upper back. Probably the easiest way to start it is sitting down in a chair, getting all the way back up against the chair, and then doing a back arch over the chair. Now this isn't an excessive back arch where you're arching from your lower back. It's just really lifting your chest and lifting your rib cage. 
So it's a pretty small movement, especially if you already have a hyperkyphosis or a excessive kyphosis. You may be starting from a position down here, and you might just be coming up a little bit. Now, you do tend to move from your lower back. And so to lock out your lower back, you can actually lean forwards a little bit and go into flexion in your lower back. Now you just want to lift up a tiny bit from your chest. Now this actually becomes a little bit harder than the previous exercise that I showed because gravity is not fighting you here. Gravity is actually kind of neutral versus when you're down like this, gravity is pushing down that way and you have to lift your trunk up that way. So this does become a slightly harder exercise, but the advantage of that is you strengthen your back extensor muscles, the muscles that help keep you from going into excessive kyphosis during the day. So again, to review those two exercises, the first one is a slight back arch over a chair. And again, it's just a very tiny movement. And then to make it a little harder, bending forward from your lower back, and then just lifting your chest and shoulders like that. Now those are both sitting down exercises and you do eventually want to be able to reduce your kyphosis when you're standing up. Now a good way to do that when you're standing up is just to think about lifting through your chest and shoulders, although you do tend to extend a little bit more from the lower back or lumbar spine when you're standing. So again, think about just a tiny little lift. Now it does help to roll your pelvis under like that, kind of to lock your lower back out. And that makes it easier for you to lift up from your upper back. Another good exercise is to stand against the wall and put your feet out in front of you a little bit so that your lower back is flat on the wall and your shoulders probably won't touch, especially if you already have some kyphosis in your upper back. Then you can start to straighten up into the wall, doing a back extension that way, or even putting your arms up, which also helps stretch your chest muscles. And when your chest muscles are tight, for example, if you work at a desk or a computer, that can round your shoulders out, and that can actually help pull you into kyphosis as well. So getting your chest muscles stretched out, as well as extending your spine at the same time, is a good way to help lessen your kyphosis. Now, what about if you have kyphosis in your neck? Kyphosis in your neck is rather rare if you're talking about this middle portion of the neck, but that does happen. That's sometimes referred to as flat neck syndrome or military neck syndrome. And I've got a different video that I'll refer you to for information about how to fix that problem. But kyphosis at the base of your neck is actually a fairly common thing to find. And that again comes from forward head posture, working at a desk for long hours and sitting like that. So the first step in fixing that is just fixing the kyphosis in your upper back. If you're not rounded out this way, it's not gonna cause as much of a forward head. So starting out by lifting your chest and shoulders and then just pulling your chin back over top of your shoulders. So you wanna take your forward head and bring it back so your ears are over top of your shoulders. If you're sitting and working at a desk, you do the same thing. Lift the chest and shoulders, and then bring the head so that your ears are over top of your shoulders. So those were a couple different exercises to help lessen the kyphosis in your upper back. And just to review those all again, there's the sitting, arching, over a chair, forward bending, and arching your back up, standing with a pelvic tilt, to lessen the lordosis in your lower back, and then doing a chest lift, standing up against the wall with your back flat up against the wall, and then lifting your chest and shoulders, bringing your arms out and stretching your chest as well as decreasing the kyphosis in your upper back at the same time. And then finally to fix kyphosis at the base of your neck, 
sitting up tall, chest high, and then pulling your chin back so that your ears are over top of your shoulders. So hopefully you found those tips helpful. Like I did mention, the quicker you address a kyphosis problem, the better your chances of reversing it to more of a normal amount of kyphosis are. So if you happen to be in the St. Louis area and you need help for a kyphosis curve in your back or kyphosis with lordosis, then we'd be happy to help you out at More for Life. Just contact us at our office and we'll get you scheduled for an appointment. And if you're watching this video from somewhere else, but you found the tips helpful, give the video a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.